Lives depend on the new COVID vaccine, but for it to work, it needs to be kept at minus 80. The moment it leaves the cryo freezer at Pfizer's manufacturing plant in Belgium, it's packed in dry ice and sent to clinics in a super insulated box. It's so cold that it's beyond the existing frozen supply chain for other medical products. The key thing in this supply chain is the amount of product we're talking about and the speed at which we would want to move it. That is an unprecedented challenge. The difference between it being at temperature and not being at temperature is it to put the medicine working or not working. It's as simple as that. Dry ice is frozen carbon dioxide. Its natural temperature is minus 80 degrees. It's by chance that this is the low-tech solution to moving around the world such a high-tech vaccine. Traditionally, vaccines have contained either a killed version of the virus or fragments of it, but they need to be made in manufacturing facilities with tight biosecurity. The Pfizer vaccine contains short segments of RNA, the genetic instruction to make part of the spike protein, which coats the outside of the virus. Once injected, the RNA turns muscle cells into spike protein factories, triggering an immune system memory in case the real virus is encountered in future. The challenge now is to distribute 40 million doses that the UK has bought to those who need it the most. I have tasked the NHS with being ready from any date from the 1st of December. The logistics are complex, the uncertainties are real, and the scale of the job is vast. GPs could staff large vaccination centres seven days a week to protect people as fast as possible, but the vaccine is unlike anything they're used to. It'll need to be unfrozen, it'll need to be diluted, and it'll need to be drawn up into separate syringes and then administered. So there are a number of steps which um, general practice isn't, doesn't traditionally have to carry out when it gives a, a large-scale vaccination programme, but they're not insurmountable. The UK has enough of the vaccine for 20 million people, short of the 30 million that the government immunisation experts consider to be at risk of serious disease. But it is a start, and if it's approved by safety regulators, rollout will begin immediately in the most extraordinary logistical challenge. Thomas Moore, Sky News.